So uh, we're in Lola's backyard, and Lola has a tendency, there's a, there's a walking trail right here if you want to kind of pan the camera and show that. So that trail right beyond that fence, uh, when the nice weather goes, uh, is going on, there's a lot of people walking their dogs and people. Now Lola's not reacting to people, but dogs, certain dogs she's reacting to. And there we go, this is perfect. So we have fence fighting, oh, a cute little fox terrier. So, uh, or is that a pup? All right, so I'm gonna do something called counter conditioning. So counter conditioning is basically a process where we get the dog close to whatever the stimulus is. In this case, this dog is the stimulus while we're controlling the dog. So first of all, I wanna put Lola into a sit. A sit. I'm letting her eat the treat while she's looking at this little dog. So my tests are, like I mentioned in the previous video, can I get her to sit and can I get her to take a treat? If she can't sit or when I put the treat around, she's looking around it, that means we're too close to this dog. So what I want to do, sit. So I'm orientating while she's looking at this other dog and I'm trying to keep the tension off the leash. So she sees this dog while she's getting the high value treat delivered. That creates a power of a positive aspect. Now she doesn't seem particularly aggressive towards this dog, but she is excited. So we do it from this distance, and now she's calm. We've done it a couple treats. So we take one or two steps. Come here. Sit. And we repeat the process. Now again, I want to try to keep the tension off the leash. Sit. 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 Is she already go away? She has a dog going, huh? Oh no, just gonna pull her over. There we go. Right here. So eventually we will get Lola come. Sit. Sit. Come here. Sit. So we can get her closer and closer to this other dog without her reacting to the other dog. Now the key is when I get too close, she's gonna get really excited. And it'll cause this dog to get excited as well. The key is to stop before your dog erupts with excitement. Now this is usually what we do with the dog as a negative reaction to the other dog. So what we could do is we can do counter conditioning like I just outlined. So basically we put the dog in a sit, give it a treat while it looks at this dog, then take it a one or two steps closer and keep on doing that. And we abort before the dog, before Lola gets too excited. The other thing you do is sit, sit. So she's looking at this dog, she's in a calm state of mind before I give her the treat. Then we're gonna take another step towards the other, towards the dog. Sit, sit. Now notice I'm not pulling her around, I'm popping the leash and relaxing. Sit. Right here, sit. Sit. So what I'm doing is I'm rewarding her for being calm as we get closer to this other dog. Lola, come. Lola, come. Sit. 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 Normally I'm guessing she's close to this dog. They're both running up and down the fence barking and they're really excited. So what we're doing is we're just introducing a new way for her to be near this other dog. Sit. 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 So I'm only delivering the treat and rewarding her for being in this calmer state of mind, not the crazy anxious running around state. this close to this dog, they're both going crazy, right? Yeah. So just by controlling the situation, we can grab, and we, by pausing in between each step, we don't move forward unless Lola's completely calm. I don't worry about what this dog's doing because it's not our, under our control. But you can do the same technique with people coming by the fence. Gotta give her a treat, she's cooperating. Um, but as people are coming by the fence, now what we wanna do is we wanna keep the distance large enough so that she's not reactive because especially if a dog comes down this trail that's really like trying to you know be assertive that's going to create a reaction for her she's like this is my territory you don't walk into my house and act like that so that creates a conflict so we want her to practice if there's one of those dogs especially if you know the dog guardian and i would ask him hey we had a behavior stubber he said we could practice would you mind just going back there and practicing walking by again so we can correct the dog so 
the last little thing is a lot of people pull their dog into position like this, and that creates a lot of tension on the line and a natural instinct for the dog to pull. So if I want to correct, notice how I immediately took the tension off. I'm not going to pull her. Come on. Sit. Sit. Now again, I want to use as much positive reinforcement as possible. So when she does sit, uh, I want to reward her. Come. Sit. But instead of pulling her, manipulating her around with the leash, which creates a negative association, a quick little jerk. Now, you don't want to do it too harsh, obviously, but you need to match her intensity, otherwise she's not going to respond to it. But a little, quick little well-timed correction will be much more effective than if you're pulling and yelling and doing all these other things. So this is basically, I started out this uh, as counter conditioning, but I mean, there's really three things we went over. We can do the counter conditioning by putting her to sit. And I mean, you might have to do it like where she's sitting on the way on that side of your yard. And then we gradually get closer and closer. Do it on a Saturday or a day, you know, a time of day, you know, 3.30 when kids are going. So there's a lot of traffic. So you get to practice this over and over and over again. But eventually you get to the point where you'll be able to be right up against the fence and she just watches people go by and understands because you have her on the leash, she's not allowed to do that. And the leash gives you the ability to control sit. And if you're using a positive association like this and letting her look at the other dog while she's getting this positive reinforcer, then this other people coming by this trail represents I get a high value treat, not people coming down this trail or dogs coming down this trail represents a violation of my territory. So, um, and again, approaching this dog, or if you have a neighbor dog over there that does the same thing, when you know, talk to your neighbors and just say, Hey, can we practice? Can you let her out? And then just gradually let your dog get closer and closer, but stop in between each step, make your dog calm down before you move forward. And you might not be able to make it all the way to that dog the first couple times. But then eventually you'd be able to do that where you put the dog, off, where you, you have the dog dragging the leash or eventually off the leash altogether and sit, stay, and then you give the dog the break command or the release command word. Oh, you were just looking there like there was somebody coming by. But eventually we want to do it off leash, but we use the leash initially for control. Come. Lola. Sit. Good job. Ah, stay. All right. 